بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to this latest episode of Heart Therapy In the last episode, we spoke about the diseases of the heart and in general, how to cure the heart of its diseases. And so, in this episode, we want to further elaborate on how to cure the heart, but we want to look at one aspect of curing the heart, and that is curing the heart from the seizure of the soul which seizes the heart. And so all diseases, they originate from the nafs or the soul of the human being, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described as being prone to evil, being inclined to evil. As he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءٍ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي That indeed, the soul is inclined to evil, except those upon whom my Lord has mercy. And so all evil corrupting substances are received by the soul. All sins are received by the soul. And then from it, they move to the rest of the body. And the heart is the first that receives that evil from the soul. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of the soul in general and from the evil that it produces in the form of actions and from the evil consequences that result from following that evil of the soul. And so the Prophet ﷺ taught us a dua. And this dua is generally recited or said in the morning and in the evening. And so it is from those duas that the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say these duas in the morning and in the evening. And so the dua that the Prophet ﷺ recited is Allahumma fatir as samawati wal ard alim al ghaybi wal shahada. O creator of the heavens and the earth, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the all knower of the unseen and the seen, la ilaha illa ant. There is no God besides you that deserves worship. Rabba kulli shay'in wa malikah And the Lord of everything and its master. A'udhu bika min sharri nafsi I seek refuge in you from the evil of my nafs, my soul. Wa min sharri shaytani wa shirkih And from the evil of shaytan and his shirk. Wa an aqtarifa وَأَنْ أَقْتَرِفَ عَلَى نَفْسِي سُوءًا أَوْ أَجُرَّهُ إِلَى مُسْلِمٍ And I seek refuge in you from performing anything evil from myself, my nafs, or that I drag it onto a Muslim, harming a Muslim with evil. And so this shows us the importance that the Prophet ﷺ showed to basically curing the heart from the evil nafs that tries to seize and take control of it. And so the heart is the primary thing that intervenes, or rather the soul is the primary thing that intervenes between a person and reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so a person cannot 
reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except after having killed the evilness of the soul and oppose its whims and its desires. And so people are basically in two camps. You have the first who are those whose souls are victorious over them. To the extent that their souls rule over them, commanding them, making the person to be obedient to their souls, carrying out its desires. On the other hand, you have the other camp, those who became victorious over their evil souls to the extent that they were the ones who were ruling over it, they were the ones who were commanding their souls to do what was in its best interest. And this is something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also pointed out to when He mentioned regarding these two camps. So as for he who transgressed all bounds and preferred the life of this world, then indeed hellfire will be his abode. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى But as for he who feared standing before his Lord and prevented the soul from, from evil inclination, then indeed paradise will be his abode. And so the heart is basically stuck between these two callers, between the evil soul calling it to evil and between himself wanting to exercise his control over his evil nafs. And this is the very test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made for each and every single human being. And so each and every single human being goes through tests and trials. That is the very nature of our existence in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in order for us to go through this test so that in the next life, those who pass this test, they will be rewarded and those who fail to pass it, they will be punished. What is this test all about? It is about taking control of that evil now. And so on the one hand, you have those who take control of the nafs and they are victorious and they will be rewarded. And on the other hand, you have those who failed the test and gave in to the evil desires of their soul. And so the soul is one entity. The nafs is one entity, but it is three kinds. Or we can say, that it has three different descriptions. And so on the one hand, we have what is known as النفس الأمارة بالسوء The soul that is prone to evil or that is inclined to evil. And this is the soul of most human beings. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُوء إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي That indeed the soul is inclined to evil except those upon whom my Lord has mercy. The second kind of soul, or the second description of the soul, is what is known as النفس اللوامة, the soul that blames itself. It constantly accuses itself. And this is, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللوامة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by this soul. And so he says, and I swear by the self-accusing soul. And the third kind of soul, or the third description of the soul, is an-nafs al mutmainna the soul that is at rest and at peace. 
And so this is the one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuhan, ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan marudiyah. This soul will be called on the day of judgment, O soul that is at peace, O reassured soul, return to your Lord well pleased and pleasing to Him. And so these are three different kinds of souls. And so every single one of us sometimes, and so every single one of us goes through these different stages in one point or other in his life. While others, they only go through one state, and others only go through two states from among these three states. And the victorious and the successful are those who attain that nafs which is at peace, and nafs al mutma'inna. And those who have failed the test, they are those who allow their soul to remain inclined towards evil, and that is an nafs al ammara bisu. And so, our duty and what we have been commanded to do is to gain control of our nafs, of our soul. We have to be commanding it and not the opposite. And so, when the soul is inclined towards evil and we submit to it, we allow it to control the heart. And this is exactly what we need to cure. This is exactly what we need to cure. Diseased hearts are diseased because people have allowed their low selves and their low souls to take control of the heart, therefore allowing it to become diseased. And so how can we cure the heart and its diseases from the soul conquering it and taking control of it and seizing it? We'll have a look at some of the ways to do that, but before we do so, we'll take a quick break and be right back in a few moments. Bi itnillahi ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to this episode of Heart Therapy. Before the break, we were speaking about the soul and how the soul that is prone towards evil, it takes control of the heart. And so that's why the heart becomes diseased. And so sins in their various kinds and forms. They afflict the heart and cause the heart to become blackened and darkened as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned regarding the nature of the heart. That it is always exposed to tests and trials. And so when the heart allows those temptations and those trials to take control what happens is that a black dot or a black stain remains on the heart. And so the fitan or the temptations and trials continue to come one after the other and the person absorbs them. And so the heart becomes black. And so the heart becomes blackened and becomes darkened and stained. And so this is because the person allowed his evil inclining soul to basically indulge in those sins. However, if he was to take control of that soul and bring it under its command, the opposite would happen. And so he would ward off those sins and instead that soul would do what is right and do what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question is, 
when the soul is seized, or rather, when the soul seizes the heart of the person, what is the cure and how can one be victorious over it? The answer is basically in two different ways. And these two ways are a must in order for one to take command of his soul. The first is what is known as muhasabatun nafs or basically bringing the nafs to account. And the second is what is known as muhalafatun nafs or opposing the nafs, opposing the nafs that wants to do evil. So as for the first, and that is muhasaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, He has mentioned that it is obligatory for us to bring our souls to account. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَالْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدٍ That, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let every soul to look at what it has put forth for tomorrow. And so, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let one of you to look at what he has put forth of actions for the day of resurrection. Are they from the good deeds that will save him? Or are they from the bad deeds that will destroy him? And so this proves that muhasabatun nafs or bringing the soul to account is obligatory upon each and every single one of us. But bringing it to account is of two kinds. One before committing the act and the other after having committed the act. And so as for the first, then basically it means to pause, to stop at the first determination and will. And so, your soul commands you to do a certain evil act. It is inclining and wanting to do that evil act. And so before you do it, pause for a second. Stop. And do not proceed with the act until it is clear to you that doing the act is more favorable to Allah than abandoning it. And basically, basically, this is regarding both good deeds and bad deeds. And so most people will think that this is referring to bad deeds, that every single time my soul is commanding me to do what is wrong, I should stop and think, is this a good idea or not? But no, it also includes good deeds. How? Basically, by looking at our intention. This particular good deed, why are we doing it? Are we doing it for the pleasure of Allah, sincerely for His sake? Or am I going to do it because I want to show off? Am I going to do it for some worldly pleasure? And so even good deeds, although on the outset they appear to be a good idea and not something that you should stop and think about, but we say no. Even with regards to good deeds, you should stop and ask yourself. Bring yourself to account. Bring your nafs, your inner self and your soul to account. Ask, is this a good idea or not? Why am I going to do this? Whether it be a good deed or whether it be a bad deed. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the verse that we mentioned earlier, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى As for he who fears standing before his Lord and prevents his soul from following its desires. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he said, regarding this verse, that it refers to an individual 
who is about to commit a certain evil act. And so he stops, he pauses, and he thinks to himself, he imagines himself standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being brought to account for committing this evil act. And so as a result, he prevents himself from following its desires. And so it is like Umar radiallahu an used to say, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Bring your souls to account before the day you will be brought to account. And so this is regarding before committing the act. As for after having committed the act, whether it be good or evil, this we can say is of three kinds. And so the first is to bring your soul to account over an act of obedience, a good deed, which you fell short in fulfilling Allah's right with respect to that deed. Thus, you do not perform it, or rather, you have not performed it. Thus, you have not performed it in the manner that you should have performed it in. And so, you bring yourself to account. You come after you have prayed and ask yourself, how was my prayer? Was it in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with? Or was there a shortcoming? And so, this is the first kind. The second kind of bringing your soul to account after having performed the action is to bring your soul to account over an act which abandoning it would have been better than performing it. And so you ask yourself after having done a certain thing, would it have been better if I had not done it? And so, if the answer is yes, then you know that what you did was wrong. Finally, the third kind of muhasaba or bringing your soul to account is by bringing it to account over something which is permissible. A permissible act, or we can say a customary act. Something which is a day-to-day -day thing, not something that you look at as being either a good deed or a bad deed. And so you ask yourself, why did you do it? You ask your soul, your nafs, why did I do it? Did I do it intending by it the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter? Or did I do it for the sake of the dunya? And so even permissible acts, things which are customary, day-to-day -day things that we do in our lives, such as sleeping, getting up, going to work, raising our children, and so on and so forth, eating, and so on and so forth. We say that these acts, we can turn them into good deeds, simply by changing our intention. And so, by seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we turn a customary act into a good deed. And so, if for example, you were to intend by sleeping, that in the morning you'll wake up full of energy in order to make a living, that you will, through that living, you will provide food for your family, and you do this for the sake of Allah, then you have earned a good deed. And that's why they say that intentions, these intentions that we make, they are the business of the scholars. Because the scholars know the importance and significance of the intention. And so, even their customary acts, their day-to-day -day things, turn into good deeds only by the change of their intention. And in the end of the day, whoever strives to perfect his soul, 
whoever strives to bring his soul to account and gain authority over his soul, indeed he is the successful one. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِهِ That whoever strives, only strives for the benefit of his own soul. And so you will see, you ask your soul, your nafs, why did I do it? Did I do it intending by it the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter? Or did I do it for the sake of the dunya? And so even permissible acts, things which are customary, day-to-day -day things that we do in our lives, such as sleeping, getting up, going to work, raising our children, and so on and so forth, eating, and so on and so forth. We say that these acts, we can turn them into good deeds simply by changing our intention. And so, by seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we turn a customary act into a good deed. And so, if for example, you were to intend by sleeping, that in the morning you'll wake up full of energy in order to make a living, that you will, through that living,